even if it's not in the forefront of your mind or in the back of your mind where you're thinking about it during your everyday activities, the minute you see it, it's like it hits you with like a heavy load where you're like, oh my God, yeah, I forgot I have this thing that I have to kind of worry about. Eventually I did get a transplant. Yeah. And that's why the front looks fairly thick, but mm -hmm. the back just didn't take. So got a buzz cut going on right now. However, that spot right there in the back is what I like to avoid seeing. So I'm going to be going down to a two millimeter buzz cut and see how it goes from here. coverage there so yeah two millimeter very nice uh, i'm gonna clean up the backs but should be nice and even all around and much easier to maintain throughout the week all right i was just constantly worrying with the whole comb over okay. situation so i'm really pleased man to be speaking to someone like yourself you did the things that you wanted to do you wanted to try you know you've not left anything on the table so to speak and although we're all dealing with the same thing right this is male pattern boldness but every man's yeah. journey is going to be different like they're going to try different things and that end point that what i kind of promote right which is the whole kind of like look dude honestly like you can accept it like you can lean into it and by doing mm -hmm. so, you can get to that point genuinely, like as scary as it sounds, like when it when it is first going on, right? I promise you, you know, it can be done. Um, and so I always wanted to make my message and my content and everything like accessible to like every man, despite what they've done. The point that when you get to like, okay, I think now I'm done with this, right? It's going to be different for everyone. I mean, you're a good example of that. So how did it all start for you then? You know, most of the men in my family are bald. So I was kind of warned early on that this may happen. My hair looked fairly thick for most of my life. I wasn't really worried. And then it's always that one picture that you see and you're like, oh, wow, maybe it's just the light, the situation it was in. I was maybe a bit sweaty and the hair was a little bit thinner in that appearance, but eventually became a pattern where every single picture you kind of notice that same spot looking a little light. It was always similarly light in the front and always the back, the, the crown. That eventually became something where I'm like, you know, I'll just hide it with hair, hair products and the type of hairstyle I have. So kind of stuck to the classic comb over my entire life. And that did a fair amount of hiding for what kind of pattern baldness that I might have at that time, which was the crown and the, uh, the front of the scalp. Eventually in college, I would try out different hairstyles. So eventually I wanted to go a little shorter just for the weather. It was getting a little hotter and you start to notice the back a little bit more in the pictures. So that's when I started to do the minoxidil treatment. So that was kind of a routine that I incorporated into my everyday life. Uh, first thing in the morning, still styled my hair with product after. Um, I used heavy products like mousse and gel, pomades. I tried everything to try to hide it. And eventually it just, it just was one part of the head, which was the back that just wouldn't hide well. Right, so, so the back just got too, too thin to hide with styling, did it? Yes, exactly. Right. Um, it was just a lack of density of hair too. So you would just see it from an angle, especially from sideways. From below, my hair looks great. And then the minute I sit down or I'm below anyone, you could definitely see the back. And eventually I kind of tried the crew cut for a while, have some pictures of those too, where that hairstyle really worked for me, um, added some texture to my hair, less maintenance. It kind of did up, appear a little bit fuller, especially with this fade on the side, but it just got to the point about three years ago where I had the opportunity to get the transplant and I started to see the shedding in the front a little bit too. Not so much about the receding hairline, but just a lack of density. That was, you know, it wasn't terrible. Um, I was prepared for what kind of journey it would be in terms of this uh, post-op period, but it worked out well. I rocked a very similar haircut actually on the recovery process for about five, six months and eventually a full head of hair in the front. And they even warned me uh, during the surgery, they actually shaved my head beforehand. And they're like, listen, you actually look fairly well with a bald head. Are you sure you want to do the surgery? And okay, I'm like, that's good of Let's them. Just yeah. go for it. 
Mm. Yeah. So I, I actually took a picture of myself with the shaved head and I was like, yeah, I kind of do like this look a little bit. Um, I had a beard at the time and I was like, I don't mind this look. So that reassurance, I think at that moment kind of was always in the back of my head that worst case scenario, if this doesn't take properly, I still felt confident in the look that I had of a shaved head. Yeah, I would try everything, Snapchat filters, Instagram filters, see what I would look like with the crew mm. cut and the buzz cut. Um, yeah. And I always was fairly satisfied with how I looked. Um, so in, in case that were to happen. So yeah. the texture of my hair did change after the surgery. That's one thing that I didn't expect. So I went from completely straight hair to extremely wavy hair. Right. Um, and that definitely changed the way I had to maintain my hairstyles and became a frustration for me because the straight hair, you could definitely comb over and kind of hide the back of the head. But with the wavy hair, it doesn't settle in place after it dries. So I still noticed that it would stay in the front thick and the back would just be completely exposed where if you didn't have that. There'd be thinner patches or something like visually, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. It, it just, it wouldn't stay where, you know, even the owner of the transplant center, he got it done himself and he's like, you will notice the back does not take after the surgery. So try to put a lot of density in the front and comb it to cover the back. Wow. And I was like, yeah, I don't mind doing a pompadour or like a, a slick back haircut. That's totally fine. Got product for it. Eventually I was trying to be more natural with my product. So just stuck with sea salt spray to make it maybe healthier for my hair. It just, yeah, it just, I, in my line of work, I'm in, I'm in the healthcare field. So I okay. do sit and with the patient and I do have light overhead. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started to notice when I would go to the bathroom during breaks or during lunch and look in the mirror, just slightly looking downward, you could easily see the back. I mean, Why? turning to my head to this side, this one spot right here, even to this day is a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's something that a lot of men talk about, but it's always in the back of your mind. Like, even if it's not in the forefront of your mind or in the back of your mind where you're thinking about it during your everyday activities, the minute you see it, it's like, it hits you with like a heavy load where you're like, oh my God, yeah, I forgot. I have this thing that I have to kind of worry about. Um, events and things like that, you're, you're always constantly, you know, I would always, even to this day, I have a habit of just fixing the back. And that that does play a heavy hand in your everyday kind of mentality. The, the four, four main things I think was like wind, rain, God forbid you sweat. And for me personally, once I get ready and I want to lay down, put my head on a pillow, waiting to kind of leave the house, can't do that. You know, I mean, you have to be extremely careful if you act, I'm being tall, if I hit the doorway, God forbid, I mean, I'm going back in the bathroom trying to fix it for another five, 10 minutes. So one strand is off and you're like kind of worried that, oh, that patch is like kind of going to be exposed. So those, those things you got to be extremely careful about. Yeah, mom. You know, I, I hear other men talk about it being challenging for their mental health. And I'm me, myself, I was like, I don't think it's that big of a deal for me. But until this moment, I don't think I realized how much of it was part of my, it, it was part of my anxiety and kind of mm. just self-esteem issues. I, I just got sick of it. I And I was just looking at all your videos again. I was like, I remember getting kind of inspired by that. Even two, two years ago, I remember getting pretty close to a buzz cut and a crew cut because of the videos I watched and the inspiration I saw from the other men's stories. So this time I'm like, I went to the barber and I said, listen, whatever it takes, just do a crew cut first. If it doesn't work, just shave it all off. I'm prepared for it. And that's kind of where we are today. After the haircut, the little things, you know, standing in the rain, not worrying about the wind, those kind of things don't matter anymore. I could kind of touch my head as much as I want and I feel great. The freedom that you feel from that now, where do you think that has come from it's the confidence that you get and, and the lack of worrying where you don't have to worry about little things there's no part of you that's kind of worried about how you look because once you kind of get rid of what is technically weighing you down um you have so much more kind of confidence in yourself and your appearance and i think main advice i got from everyone when i was first hesitant to get this haircut was and this is even fairly long for what i want is make sure you wear it with confidence you know 
it, people will be shocked that you had a full, I had a full head of hair before this, like seven, eight inches and just decided to go for it. Mm -hmm. And the confidence that you get from that, where you just walk out and you feel good, you know, people don't really care about your hair. So they, that, I think that's what men have to understand is that they will either think it looks good or they may not. But at the end of the day, do you feel good about yourself? And if you do, that's worth it 10 times more than anything else. So after the transplant, I'm guessing you were doing the, both like the medication, but the minoxidil and the finastro, were you doing both of those post-op? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. um, they recommend doing that. Um, yeah. they even gave me the pill form. I know everyone will, will, will ask that, you know, or they'll say like, oh, you should have done that. And, you know, so that's, that's just yeah. a clarification really. So what were you hoping that the transplant would kind of give you? I know that may sound like an obvious question, but yeah, just trying to dig a bit more into like your specific thoughts that you were having kind of around that time. Yeah, I know for sure. I mean, a few, I was thinking about a few things. I mean, I was definitely hopeful for more of a full head of hair and more confidence and more ability to kind of style, style it the way I want to. But the most heavy thought I had was, I believe that post-op period, how that would be. Um, to kind of give you some context, I was about to start my residency year, like right after, uh, two, two months after. So I was going to be exposed to a lot of people. I had summer break. So I had about two months of a break before then. Um, but, you know, I was about to go see a lot of patients, a lot of coworkers, going back to school for that. So I was pretty worried. I mean, I've seen some of the post-op pictures and I was like, you know, there is going to be some shedding, some scabbing, some redness. And it was in my eyes, kind of cutting it close in terms of maybe what I would look like being there. Cause that was going to be the shortest I had my hair ever in my life. So no one's seen me like that. Um, and I think that that was the biggest worry I had, but I think Thankfully, it did recover fairly well, and I was fairly confident again in myself. But the other thing I was worried about was what what are people going to react to with my buzz cut? So mm -hmm. even though it didn't look like I had a recovery uh, or scabs, anything like that going on in the front with this short hair, I saw these people maybe four months ago, and now all of a sudden I have a buzz cut. What is going to kind of happen? Because I did see some patches of thinning, and I wore a hat. I mean, I, I literally wore a hat to work in orientation. Um, I took my pictures for my headshots ahead of time, planning all of this out. It was oh, a lot of coordination. Okay. Mm. So, um, I, you know, they took headshots the day of, and I, I kind of stood on the side with a hat on because I made sure to take those two months ahead of time with like the perfect product I could possibly get at that time. Even then, it was a hot day. I was sweating. It wasn't perfect. So, um that that kind of was like, wow, it's really bothering me. It's really weighing down on my self-confidence and how I feel as a person. But that post-op period definitely kind of opened up my eyes because looking in the mirror, I was, again, not worried about product, not worried about styling it. And everything kind of just worked out well in terms of people's reactions. So yeah. that gave me a glimpse of what the future could be like, which is now. Okay. So, I mean, it sounds like one of the best things to come out of the whole hair transplant experience for you was to be almost forced into that zone of discomfort with like kind of being exposed I mean I know you did the hat and things like that but kind of I'm sure there were times where people would see you kind of with like essentially probably at that time in your high eyes like no hair right like a shaved head the buzz cut mm -hmm. and then when you had yeah. the op and they were like are you you know are you sure and then um, it sounds like that whole kind of thing combined really did a lot to kind of reduce your anxiety and and things in general around the hair loss is that a fair assessment i 100 percent, 100 percent. i mean i like I, I kind of mentioned before i have two uncles that completely mm. shave their head and i've seen them with hair before so i even have called them in the past year or two saying hey um when how did you do it like how what 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 was the key turning point and they're like said the same exact thing I've kind of heard from a lot of other people where they're they were sick of it and they kind of wore it with confidence and they loved their life after so that coupled with the fact that exactly seeing myself in the mirror with those kind of that look was it was not as bad as I thought you know it, it because I felt good about myself so at the end of the day the way you feel definitely outweighs how you think you're gonna look and that's one thing I feel like 
even myself, like I, I used to care so much about how people think and view me and like how I look and always put together things like that. But I mean, I've received nothing but compliments, thankfully, from coworkers around me. But even then, I've had some negative responses and I still it doesn't hurt me at all compared to what I thought it would. So the confidence you gain is just it's a different feeling. It's something that I wish that I hope everyone can kind of experience one day if they're going through something like this. I agree, man, 100%. It's like once that, once your internal dialogue kind of changes to something more positive, you even mm -hmm. assess and take things that other people say completely differently. Um, and you yeah. mentioned something really interesting there that your uncle said where he was like, you know, eventually I just got sick of it. You did the transplant, you go through the, the recovery, you know, you're still, okay, yep, this is good. You recovered well, it sounds like. So when did it kind of change or did it change? Did you notice like afterwards, like, I, hey, I'm still kind of like, this is still on my mind and still kind of, because that's the really interesting part here, right? Which I think is a very valuable to hear your experience because a lot of people have huge expectations going into having a transplant and things like that, right? That it can just like completely solve all their, their problems. So, you know what I mean? So how did it, how yeah. did it play out for you in terms of, of, of um after the recovery process and having it still be on your mind and things like that it was the main worry about just all the little things that we were talking about those mm -hmm. kind of things were still on my mind so i thought that that confidence would kind of like still be there or get bigger uh bigger in terms of how confident i would feel but in reality it was just you still had that worry in the back of your head so i think a lack of confidence and like what i would still see in the pictures and like right. in in the mirror i was kind of unsatisfied i guess in a way um people would always compliment saying it looks great the front is fantastic and it's great but you get a second one and that thought i'm like oh get a second one then maybe it's going to be a third one then a fourth one and when does it end kind of thing you know um because as easy as it was you know it still was a little bit in terms of the recovery process you have to sleep upright you have to take some medication you have to kind of take care of it spray it every hour so it wasn't Perf perfectly easy it wasn't hard but it was a process to go through so mm. how many times do you have to do that what do you have to do constantly every day to kind of take care of it and it's in my mind i was when does it end you know i i, I didn't know when it was gonna end so i think that's when i kind of decided to see how it would feel to kind of just let it go i mean the way i feel now i don't see myself ever kind of going down that route again um mm. It, I just see myself maybe going shorter or keeping it at this length at max and feel pretty confident with myself. Excellent. Excellent. Music to my ears, man. No, I, I love to hear that. And I'm glad that you've, you know, got to that. And and again, you know, stepping into that zone of discomfort, once again, you've, you've kind of seen like, actually, can it, you know, maybe I don't need to try and cover this. It's kind of out there. I'm doing my thing and I can, I can handle this. My last question for you really is what was the moment when you were like, Okay, I'm going to go get that shortcut. Yeah, I think it was, you know, I was looking back at pictures. Um, and I think one thing that a lot of people don't talk about is societal pressures. Um, people even close to you might say, don't do it. It's not worth it. Um, it's not for everybody. And then you realize you're like, it's my hair. It's my body. I could do what I want with it and see what happens and then go from there. Because at the end of the day, it's just one part of you. It doesn't change who you are as a person. It's just one little aspect, but it can change your confidence, like I said. So I think looking at pictures and then taking pic. everyone does the classic taking a picture of the back of their head with uh, in the mirror with different lighting and seeing how it looks. Yeah. And I saw one picture and it was pushed me over the edge where I was like, wow, like this is actually kind of worse than other men have seen in their own head or their hairstyle that they have pushed to kind of get a buzz cut. So in my eyes, I was like, this is not a good look for me. I mean, this looks terrible because it was really thinning back there. So that's when I, I kind of said, I don't care what anyone says. I don't mind because let me try out that crew cut maybe in the past, go shorter and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And even the barbers at the store were laughing with me. They were, they said, you have, you know, you're the bravest guy that walked in today. You got this cheers. You're going to be so much happier. And they were all cheering, clapping. And Love the, that. the other customers were with me. And it was a great moment, actually. I wish I recorded it, but it was 
fantastic because he just went through with it and he's like you look great man and i felt amazing having like support from other men too that they know what it's like so that was probably one of the best days of my life because i felt so much confidence and happiness that i haven't felt in a long time Love that. I love that. No, it sounds like a great moment. And and with that, you know, saying um, you felt that confidence and it was great, you know, that support from from other men, which is key. You know, this is kind of why we're here in as well. Right. Do you have any like kind of little message or, or kind of a thought process that you've had that you want to share that could could help someone out, else out there that was is maybe in the position that you have been in the past? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, um, definitely try everything if you'd like to. I mean, at the end of the day, they're there for a reason. There are forums and people kind of promoting different things for a reason. Do it. I've done it myself, so go for it. But at the end of the day, if you don't feel good about yourself, if you're worrying, if things like rain and wind and pictures alter your personality and your kind of confidence in yourself and the way you think of it and feel about yourself... Just try it. Just try to go for the buzz or the shave because at the end of the day, if you don't like it, grow it back. It's not like it's going to lose any more hair, right? I mean, compared to what you had before. So see how you feel then. And then if that goes well, you got something good going for yourself. Just know that you should love yourself at the end of the day because that's the biggest thing in the world.